Yeah, it looks like everybody is in. Yep. Okay, great. Then let's get started. Thank you for coming, everybody, um, to the this afternoon's liquor uh, license commission meeting, Wednesday, November second. Uh, this meeting is being Zoom recorded and present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, Commissioners Helen Kahn and Jennifer Ewers. Is there anybody here who wishes to speak during public comment? And Amy Cahillane has raised her hand. Okay, I have to unmute her. Okay. Oh, can Great. you hear me okay? I'm. Hi, I'm zooming from the car, so I apologize if you can't hear or see me. Um, but if I'm okay, I'll start. You're okay. Fabulous. Okay. I just will. <laughs> Great. I wanted to speak really quickly uh, to agenda item 10 to just offer my support to Sylvester's restaurant and ask the commission that they be um, flexible in hearing Sylvester say that they're engaged in some conversations regarding. Uh, restaurants and that space. I would hate for downtown to lose um, a prospective new restaurant to a neighboring town over an issue of timing and liquor license renewal. And I know that there are some other restaurants who um, are probably looking for an all alcohol license, but I think that the commission and the city have a couple of other avenues that they could perhaps explore to see if we could get them the liquor licenses they need and afford Sylvester's time to um, complete the conversations that they have ongoing. So I'm just putting in a, an ask to be flexible and consider giving them a bit more time to get the conversations that they're engaged in um, to see them through to fruition and fingers crossed perhaps fill that space. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Do we have anybody else for public comment? Okay, not seeing any, we are going to move on to the next agenda item, the application for a short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music Incorporated, 274 Main Street for Friday, December 2nd, 2022, 7 to 11 p.m. This is the Pioneer Valley Ballet Nutcracker and the Academy is requesting a wine and malt license with a request for a fee waiver. And I see Melissa's here. Hi. Hello, Melissa. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, it's a little depressing to see the nutcracker on the agenda because that means winter's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Get ready. <laughs> um, do you have any changes that you'd like to share with us? No changes. All right. Um, then would Jennifer or Helen like to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a short term liquor license for the Academy of Music as detailed in item three on the agenda. I'll second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you, Melissa. Okay. Thank you. Item number four, application for a new common victual license for Little Wall LLC at 91 Main Street in Florence. And do we have anybody here for Little Wall? There's a few, there's a few people here that, that they're not identified. Um, yes, uh, I'm Kara, I'm the owner. Hi there. Hi, Anna. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. We're very excited to hear about this. Okay. <laughs> this new endeavor in Florence. Do you want to let us know what um, what your plans are? Yeah, we try to open this little wall. Um, it's mostly to go restaurants. Um, is we try to side down the restaurant a little bit from the gray wall. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, we hope <laughs> we can do it sooner because we'll be holding for over a year, year um, for them. Yeah. So, yeah. So we joined the meeting today. So everything ready to go. So great. Um, Helen or Jennifer have any questions? Yeah, I'm just curious. You may have said this. When, when are you trying to open? As soon as possible. Okay. 
<laughs> been uh, holding for a few years. Right. I do. Yeah. We've been, everybody's been watching the, the progress there. So that's right. We see your sign. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Great. And if there are no um, further questions from the commission, I will make a motion to approve the application for the new common mixer license for Little Wall LLC at 91 Main Street in Florence. I will second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Thank you, Clara. Great. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Best wishes. Enjoy the day. All right, moving on to item number five, public hearing on an application for a change of ownership interest and change of officers, directors, LLC managers on an annual wine and malt package store license. This is for Pride Operating LLC, 375 King Street. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Great, and is there anybody here to speak during public hearing to this item? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Commissioner is Tom Miller from McDermott, Colty & Miller on behalf of the licensee. Great. Thank you for being here. I understand this has been approved by the ABCC already, so... Um... It's been reviewed by the ABCC. They haven't approved it. Oh, they haven't? Okay. It's, it, it's based on... They can't, they can't approve something you guys haven't. So they oh, okay. Got it. it. Mm -hmm. um, but pending, you, you know, the local board's approvals for, for these uh, changes, um, they have found it acceptable. Okay. Um, do you want to just, just walk us through the change that's happening? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just, as I uh, start off today, uh, I want to mention that I'm joined by uh, attorney Maury Bricks, who's general counsel for GPM Investments. And um, I saw, thought I saw um, Jim Channing, who is general counsel for uh, Pride uh, on as well. Okay. Um, br briefly, um, Pride Holdings, uh, Pride Operating is owned by Pride Holdings, um, which is owned by Pride Parent. Um, we have applied to transfer the beneficial interest from Pride Hold in Pride Holdings to GPM Investments from Pride Parent. Ultimately, it's just we're swapping out one a couple levels up with another. Uh, GPM Investments is a wholly owned subsidiary of Arco Corporation, a publicly traded company. Um, while we're here, you know, before you on these changes today. In reality, on the day-to-day -day level, there will be no operational changes. Um, in the store manager and the manager of record are not changing. Uh, both Jim Channing, who's their general counsel, and Marsha Medina, who is the LLC manager, um, who have been with Pride for a number of years, they're not changing. Um, so overall, customers and, and the board will see no difference in the way this this license is is change uh, is operated after the change. Um, GPM Investments is an experienced operator with over a thousand different licenses of this type uh, in different jurisdictions across the country. They understand the responsibilities for holding this type of license, and they look forward uh, to this opportunity to enter the new market of uh, Western Massachusetts. Um, the accompanying application for change of officers and directors simply reflects the proposed change in ownership here um, from Pride Parent to GPM. Um, as you mentioned, the ABCC has taken a look at this and pending approval by the local boards, um, they have found this, uh, these applications satisfactory. Um, as we said, this is just a change in ownership with no change to the day-to-day -day operations. We want to thank you for seeing us today, hearing us today, and we're happy to answer any questions you have. Sure, wonderful. Um, Jennifer and Helen, do you have any questions? Uh, I do not, no. No, no questions. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. Did anybody else um, from your team who's here want to speak? Um, no? no, that's I mean, fine. I, okay, yeah, you covered it. Um, then I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Great. Um, everything appears to be in order, obviously, and with the um, ABCC hasn't formally approved it, but they have the paperwork that they need. So I see no reason to not move forward with this. Yeah, I agree with your assessment. Okay. Same thing. Jennifer? Yeah, I agree. Okay, would one of you like to make a motion then? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a change of ownership interests and change of officers, directors, LLC managers on an um, annual wine and malt package store license for Pride Operating LLC at 375 King Street. Great, I will second. 
and Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, item number nine, application for a change of manager on an annual wine and malt restaurant license for Teapot Restaurant Incorporated, 116 Main Street. The proposed manager is Chi Cha Wu, and I apologize if I've mispronounced your name. Do we have somebody here from Teapot? I'm gonna take a wild guess and... Yes. Hello. Yes, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yes. Could you say your name so I don't mispronounce it in the future? Yeah, you, you pronounce it right, Chi Chia Wu, oh, yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Um, can you let us know a little bit about um, your role with Teapot and plans moving forward? Oh, yes. Uh, we, we have a liquor license since in 98, you know, but uh, my manager did change the job to drive a truck. So I'm on a teapot, you know, so I have to take a marriage by myself. Looking at your paperwork. And Annie, everything is in for this, right? Yes. Okay. Jennifer and Helen, do you guys have any questions? Uh, no, the paperwork's in order. I don't have any questions. I don't have any questions. Okay. Did you want to add anything before we... Um, Take a vote, a vote? No. Okay. Then I will approve the application for a change of manager on an annual wine and malt restaurant for Teapot Restaurant as outlined in agenda item number six. Thank you. Thank you very I, much. Thank you. I will second. Okay. <laughs> and Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right, item seven, another public hearing. This is for an application for change of officers, directors, change of stock interest and pledge of collateral on an annual all alcohol package store license for Cooper's Dairyland of Northampton Incorporated, DBA Cooper's Corner at 31 Main Street in Florence. And I will make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Do we have anybody who wishes to make a comment before uh, we dive in? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm David Park, and I'm an attorney for uh, Richard Cooper in Cooper's Dairyland. And I, I see that uh, Richard is here, and, and Al Albano, who represents Michael Natalia, is here. Um, this application is in connection with a sale of the shares of Cooper's Dairyland of Northampton, Inc., from uh, Richard Cooper to his um, management employee, Michael Natalia. Um, there are various aspects of the transaction that require approval. One is the change of stock ownership. Uh, another is the change of, of officers and directors, which would change from, from Richard to, to Michael after the, after the closing. And then there's some financing involved. There's a, there will be loans from a Greenfield Savings Bank to, to Michael Natale, which would be secured by uh, the assets of the corporation, which would include the um, of the license in the alcoholic beverages inventory. And then there would be also um, seller financing from Richard to Michael, uh, which would be secured by a stock pledge and a second position in the uh, assets of the corporation, including the uh, liquor license in the uh, alcoholic beverages uh, inventory. Uh, there would be no change uh, in any of, in the, in the managers under the license. Uh, uh, but this is for this is all in connection with a proposed uh, change of, of, of ownership of the corporation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is um, there anybody else who would like to speak to this before we close the public hearing portion? Hi, Rich. Uh, hi there. So I, I just want to add, as David um, mentioned, I want to emphasize that there's there's no change in in how the store operates at all. Um, Mike has been my general manager and has worked with me for 15 years. Uh, the manager at Cooper's um, is Mike Pernolo, who's been with me for 11 years. Um, and so everybody knows how to, how to run a good operation. The possibilities are. It's, um, I have to say the Gazette did a really nice job of explaining all of this to us over since you announced your retirement. So it's, 
<laughs> we're all, I think the community is super well versed and really excited for you to uh, be taking over, Michael. Um, do either of the other commissioners have any questions? No, I don't have specific questions. Okay. Then I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All righty. Um, for discussion purposes, like I just said, the, you know, this has been one of the best reported happy stories in the Valley in a while. So I really don't have any comments other than everything is very clear and it's a, it's a great transition. Fully agree and congratulations right. to both of you. Yes. Yeah. So are we ready for a vote? Absolutely. Yes. Sure. All right. Then I will make a motion to approve the application for the change of officers, directors, change of stock interest, and pledge of collateral on an annual all alcohol package store license for Cooper's Dairyland of Northampton Incorporated DBA Cooper's Corner. Second. And um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. All right, let's do this again for State Street. Item number eight, public hearing on an application for change of officers, directors, change of stock interest, and pledge of collateral on an annual all alcohol package store license for Cooper's Dairyland of Northampton Incorporated DBA State Street Wine and Spirits at 51 State Street. And I make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Great. And who would like to speak this time? Uh, this is David Park again, and, I, and it's the same transaction uh, under a different license at, at a different location, uh, but it's the same transaction. Excellent. Um, any questions on this one from the commissioners? No? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. And I'll make a motion to approve the application for the change of officers, directors, change of stock interest, and pledge of collateral on an annual all, help, all alcohol package store license for Cooper's Dairy Land of Northampton, DBA State Street Wine and Spirits. Second. <laughs> and Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Good luck, Michael. Congratulations. Yes. Best wishes, Rich. I hope you can sleep yeah. past 4.30. It's been a long time. <laughs> yes, thank, thank you so much. I appreciate all you guys do. I know what it is to be on a volunteer board and, and Annie is wonderful, so thank you. Yes, Annie is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a attorney Albano speaking. I'd like to just throw Hi. something out there. Um, I, I wanna thank Annie for shepherding us through this. Uh, she did a great job of telling us what we were missing, what we needed uh, and really made it easy for us. Thank you. Yes, thank you for saying that. And he does a really great job. Yeah. That's very nice. Thank you. Love it. Happy, happy stories here for this one. Okay. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Item number nine, application for a short-term liquor license. McCallum's Dry Goods Incorporated, DBA Cedar Chest, 150 Main Street for Wednesday, December 7th, 2022, 5 to 7 p.m. The event is the arrive at 5 and the request is for a wine and malt license. And do we have anybody here from? Can you see me? It's Katie from Cedar Chest. I see Katie's iPhone, which works, and we hear you. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. We're having some okay. computer switching, which means that um, Zoom's not happening on everything. So I'm on my phone. <laughs> sorry about it. The phone works. Um, okay. So you are hosting an Arrive at Five. And I see on the paperwork you're using um, Amanda from Talis to handle your serving. Yes. Excellent. Um, and how did your, um, I wasn't able to attend, but how did the Stay Golden unveiling party go? It was fantastic. It was really a lovely evening and TELUS was a wonderful collaborator in that. Yeah. So we're moving along with them again because I'd like them to have as much business as they can as a sort of semi-startup, I would call them. <laughs> they yeah. all know what they're doing, but they're all doing it together now. So yeah, and for this particular event, you've already done it once with Amanda, something similar. So this will be a no-brainer. Yep, and I really liked the professionalism on how they handled public crowds. Oh, well, that's great. That's yep. good to hear. Um, Helen and Jennifer, do you have any questions? I have no questions. No questions. Thank you. Katie, did you have anything else to add? No, it seems to be that the Arrive at Fives kind of do their thing. <laughs> they do. They do that. That is right. a well-oiled machine. Yes. Yeah. 
the people will show up. Um, okay, great. Then I will make a motion to approve the application for the short-term liquor license as outlined in agenda item number nine. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Thank you all so much. I hope most of you can join us. Yes. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right. Moving on to agenda item number 10. Discussion of the special act liquor license currently held by Sylvester's Fine Foods Incorporated. So um, a little background here for these types of licenses. So this was back in 2016, Mayor Narkowitz appealed to the state and was able to secure some additional special act licenses. The language around these licenses is specific that um, once a business is, once a license is no longer in use, it should be returned physically with all the legal rights, privileges, restrictions pertaining thereto to the licensing authority of the city of Northampton. In the past, when these licenses were um, made available, the commission, at the discretion of the commission, held a lottery, and that's how the restaurants that are, are listed were able to receive them. So that's the brief history. Um, for discussion purposes, we have uh, spokes from Sylvester's here to speak to us about what you're up to. And then, you know, we don't have a vote on the um, agenda this afternoon. This is really a discussion. So I guess let's just open that up and see where it goes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Chris St. Martin and this is Peter St. Martin. We're on behalf of Sylvester's. Hello. Thank you uh, for coming. Thank you for having us. Um, so to the extent that, um, you know, the question is sort of, what are we up to at Sylvester's? Um, I would just sort of set the stage with, you know, the pandemic really resulted in a lot of ups and downs for our business. We've, we've closed and reopened a couple of times. Um, you know, in the last year and a half, we reopened again. Um, we had some success, but um, we were left to the conclusion that uh, the business as it existed at that time was not, um, not sustainable. Uh, given the, you know, food cost, labor shortage, um, you know, a decrease in downtown foot traffic, a lot of other factors, um, which led us to close our doors in May. Um, and here we are uh, just a few months later. Um, we, our current plan is still to reopen and do something with the Sylvester's business, the Sylvester's name. Um, we don't know exactly what that plan is. Uh, we have considered a few different proposals uh, we have a few plans of our of our own to you know relating to reopening uh, under that name. Um, so uh, you know, with that said, um, you know, I'm aware that the commission's probably concerned about having an unused license and an empty storefront, um, and we're not uh, you know insensitive to that. Um, but we we sort of um, plan to apply for renewal of this license. Okay. Um, what I appreciate about this, the special act license is it's very clear to me in the language and it's not always clear with some of these things. There's often a lot of gray area. To me, there's not a lot of gray area here. When a business closes, the license should come back to the city. So in the same interest of, you know, thinking about what all the businesses and restaurants in particular have been through in our community with COVID, we have, and, and, and I'm just, this is just part of my discussion moment here, but so we have what you've experienced and making the decision to close um, in what seemed a permanent decision. And then we have other restaurants who, for whom this license could really save the day. So that's kind of, that's the, there's, there's two things there that we have to balance. And, and for me, the, the, my mind goes to the language that I'm reading in the special act, which says that once a business closes, the license should be returned. So that, you know, is, um, that's sort of where I am at with that. And I would love to hear from Helen or Jennifer with any questions, because I know Jennifer, you're newer to the commission, so you might not remember um, when these licenses were secured in 2016. Right, I don't remember when the licenses were secured, but, um... Chris, I mean, do you have any sort of timeline? Any 
Um, well, we certainly would plan to do something, I think, within the next six months. I, I, we're still um, you know, unclear exactly what we're going to do. Um, you know, if the commission, I, I mean, I know nothing specific is on the agenda today. And if the commission thinks that maybe a, a full 12 month renewal would be sort of way out of the question, we'd be open to, you know, a shorter time period or something like that. Um, if that's something that uh, you'd be more comfortable with. Um, but we have had a few serious proposals. Um, some involve partnering with, um, with others uh, to sort of, you know, co-manage something. Um, maybe, you know, run some sort of uh, toned down version of what Sylvester's once was, maybe expand into a nighttime business. Um, but, you know, right now we, we intend to use the license. Um, we don't see Sylvester's as having ceased to uh, exist. Uh, it's, it's closed, obviously, um, but Sylvester's Fine Foods Inc. certainly still um, exists legally. Um, the brand certainly still uh, lives on. So I totally appreciate that, but the, the fact is that the, bit, the license is no longer in use. The license, so we, we have an obligation to put that license either back into cir circulation or you have an obligation to start reusing that license. And I, I'm not inclined, and again, we're not voting on anything today, but I'm not inclined to um, give a year, year's time to sort that out when we have other restaurants in town who, you know, every time we've had one of these licenses, we've at our discretion done a lottery and there's usually seven or eight restaurants who, who come forward and put something in the hat and only one of them gets it. So I'm thinking of those six other people who who really could use this boost. Yeah, and I'm not insensitive to that at all. I understand. Oh, no, I know, totally. And I and I'm like, you know, it's just this has just been a horrible time. So I, I get I yeah. get what you've been through. I get the decision that was made and, and necessitated by the experiences of COVID to close the doors at that time. But the also the the uh, reality of doing that too is that you had a special act license that was no longer in use. So our, I mean, I think our responsibility is to say this license needs to come back to the city so that it can be reissued and put to use immediately. Do you, um, do you have any inclination to give us some uh, leeway and try to figure out something quicker if that would uh, please the board? You know, I don't, I don't know, Pete. It's really, it's, a, it's hard because it's been, just over six months at this time. And um, that's a long, that's that's six months of when the license couldn't have been used by somebody else. So, and I understand how long it takes to time these things and, and bring things, you know, for planning and bringing people together and financing and everything else. I, I am not inclined to go for a year. And I honestly wouldn't be inclined for even anything as long as six months. I just think it's, I think it's a the license is an asset, and because we're in the um, the pickle we're all in with COVID and restaurants, especially still going into winter, I I don't want to see the license unused when it could really be what keeps somebody else's doors open who are open right now. Yeah, that's that's totally understandable. Yeah, we're just we want to work with you, but we don't yeah. want to lose this license. Uh, we were. We were here for 39 years and we worked for a long, long time to get to the position where we were finally granted this license. And it was only in 2016 after having been here since 1983. So we really appreciated it when we got yeah. that license and it has really been a lifesaver for us. Unfortunately, the pandemic wasn't a lifesaver and uh, we really just had a tough time with yeah. the change of foot traffic in downtown and the change of the business during the week and the weekends, it was just not enough to sustain what Sylvester's was. So yeah, uh, if you could just grant us some time to figure out what our next step is, we could certainly expedite the process if that would be what you're looking for. I'd like to hear from Helen and, uh, and Jennifer. Um, yeah, so I, um, I have to say, I concur with a lot of the things that Natasha is saying. I, on a personal level, I'm confused because at least the public perception was that you were closed. I mean, that's sort of what the announcement was. There's been a lot of grief and, you know, understandably in the community about your closure. Well, and some stuff when that happened. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> And that is how it sounded, that it's like that that was the decision we were closing 
Sylvester's. And and obviously you have a right to, you know, consider reopening. Um, but in terms of the license, the other piece, um, aside from denying other um, establishments that are open right now, the opportunity, obviously, to use that license is that, you know, um, I think Natasha used the term that it's an asset. It is an asset. And there's almost a degree in some ways of unfairness of that's now an asset to uh, draw people into potentially partnering with you. I'm, I'm not trying to say we want to put you at a disadvantage, but it's it's something that was sort of won in a lottery. The, the you know, the thought is that when you're closed and it comes back, and then at, at that point, it's not something that essentially is yours to sort of sell or bargain with um, to, to, to reopen or to develop another establishment. You know, and we have, unfortunately, a history where there was sort of where that kind of thing happened, that it really did become an, uh, an, another establishment, but they maintained the license. And that was very complicated and difficult situation, which I wouldn't want to get into again. Um, you know, because then it seems like the, the language isn't determining necessarily, which we were doing before is like, is it the same establishment or not? But certainly ownership is a factor too. So anyway, I mean, I, it, you know, it's one of these that we grappled with this before because it's hard to sort of deny um, anyone, especially with such a, you know, long standing in the community um, an advantage. We don't want to put anyone at a disadvantage, but we also don't, we want to go by the language um, of the license and we don't want to deny other people the opportunity and sort of hope that something will happen with your establishment. So that's where I am right now. Um, you know, I know we're not voting on anything today. Well, I don't, I don't know that there is anything to vote on really because we have the language of the act and I mean, there's, yes, all this discussion is important to factor into next steps, but um, if we work with what we have that is very black and white, it's the language of the act. And there are two pieces, the business closed and the, at, the language says the license should come back. So in that regard, there is no, there's no vote to really have. It's kind of like, we're having this discussion. You'd like to keep the license and renew it, but the, according to the law, the license should come back. It's not an asset to continue to um, plan a business around. Jennifer, do you have some thoughts? I see you're, you're thinking. All right, I, I do think that Ten years should be considered. I, I appreciate the time and the the blood, sweat, and tears that have gone into running your business. I mean, my family has enjoyed Sylvester's, um, and and I appreciate your your ties to the community. Um, and I'm trying to look forward. I know that we're coming the days back from when you closed, but we're at the hearing today, and it. I do want to be fair, and I do think you should should be given some opportunity. Um, because today does count. Um, but I am certainly concerned that if we had uh, another discussion in, in 90 days that we might not have an answer and then we're back to the, the fairness question. You know, again, this would be an unused license where somebody else in the winter could benefit from it. And I, I don't know if a promise can be made today to say that you would have an update in 90 days. Right, that, or even an update that would be acceptable. I mean, this would have to really. This license was given to to Sylvester's, so you know, it would have to resume business kind of as Sylvester's. It can be reimagined Sylvester's, but there's gonna there will be limitations around that, and um, it's yeah. I mean, it's the more the the it just it gets it gets messy. There's the the providing the opportunity to. to um, come up, have some time to come up with something is it creates more of a mess than what the clarity that we have from the act. And that's, you know, so my, my position is, is that the license needs to come back to the city. And I don't say that lightly. I really don't. It's, you know, it's not a great, it's a, it's not a great position to be in for anybody, but it's, this is the type of license that we're dealing with.
I would, um, if I could ask, uh, just to clarify, your position is that it should be returned to the city immediately? Well, yeah, I mean, technically it should have been returned to the city when the business closed. And I see Amy has a hand up, but this is not a public, you did speak during public comment, but we can't now. Um, so I'll give you an example. Sierra Grill closed and the license came back. This, the Sierra Grill had the same special act license. So it was, it was black and white based on the language of the act. So um, I haven't extensively researched the sort of legal background behind this, but um, I do see that the act, you know, the language of the act is if a license granted is, you know, no longer in use, it shall be returned physically. I know that there's some precedent um, for considering, uh, you know, a couple different approaches to licenses that are sort of no longer in use under the act. Um, I, I know that, and I, I'm sure that this, I know that this wasn't, you know, intended to be precedential, but when Abiza Tapas ceased uh, their operations, um, the agenda item was to decide whether Ibiza has ceased conducting the licensed business at the premises. Uh, that's a much different inquiry than um, whether the license is in use. Um, so and if I can just interrupt you quickly, the, the sure. Ibiza never closed their doors. There was change in owner. There was a, a one owner stayed on. He brought on other owners. And at the time, this was a previous iteration of the license commission. At the time, they were really grasping straws and were allowed to do something that I, I would not have voted in favor of at that time because we have this very clear language. So to use that as an example, I understand if that was that and that dragged on for years and I don't want to do that again. Um, but to 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 show to just be specific in how that's a different situation, they never closed. They never closed their doors. They changed ownership. They added another name and this dragged on for years, but they never closed. So. They continue. And I, yeah, and I understand that. And I, I understand that, that that whole thing was not intended to be precedential. Right. Um, although I would say that, you know, the legal definition of no longer in use might might not be as clear cut. Um, although I, I don't know. I haven't had time to fully. Um, I would I would agree with that, but I can't think of a more clear cut no longer in use than announcing a closure of a business and then closing the doors for six months. So I, I feel like it's very, I feel like this is a very clear cut situation. And I don't, and again, I'm not saying that lightly and I'm, I feel very much for, for what you wanna do and the time you've put into doing business in the city and really creating so much of the culture of our restaurant community. But we, we have this language that's specific and that, that's the guide for me that I need to use. So in my mind, the license should come back. Uh, this goes this goes to something completely separate, but similar is that is when we were granted this liquor license, we had, and we had our own beer and wine license at the time. Yep. And we were required to turn that in in order to get this uh, special act liquor license. So. Would there be uh, some accommodation for returning up to the wine license? Yeah, I mean, Andy, that's that is simply a anybody can really get a beer and wine license. You just you you provide the application for it. Correct. There's nothing that would preclude them from doing that. We certainly wouldn't stop you from having that. But it starts as a seasonal beer and wine license, and then it can be converted into an annual beer and wine license with a five thousand dollar conversion fee. And that so fee is for the ABCC, or is that a North That's Hampton? A, that's Hampton? a city fee, yes. And whose discretion is that fee imposed? Um, the mayor's. Okay. I mean, I I would really happily support uh, revisiting that fee in this case. Absolutely. I don't want you to, I don't want you to be hindered in this process of reopening a business. Um, you know, that that's, and I know it would be great to just say, keep this license and run and do something great. But in following the letter of the act, I think the license should be returned, but I would absolutely support any effort to 
uh, reduce or remove a fee to get you a annual wine and beer. Again, it's at the mayor's discretion though. I, I, I'm not specifically asking for that. I was just yep. wondering if that was going to be an option. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we would, you know, we don't want to preclude you from being able to do business. Like, then we understand the importance of being able to serve even wine and beer. So, yeah. well, all I can just say is that this, we are in an unprecedented times. And mm -hmm. I know the language is very specific for this special liquor license but we've really tried to keep Sylvester's open and, and I get that the yeah. language is specific. We closed the business and we announced that we were closed. The fact is Sylvester's needed to go away because we were never gonna stop people from coming in here and ordering two eggs and toast, which we did not yeah. wanna do anymore. So yeah, I we, get it. We are, the closing was part of a rebranding thing. The rebranding thing is gonna be something we don't even know yet because we're too busy running another restaurant, mm -hmm. which we are in times where we can't even find enough help to run that one restaurant, Never mind open a second restaurant. So. And if you're if you're aware of the restaurants in town, they're all struggling to keep enough help just to run one restaurant, never mind keep two going. So we are in unprecedented times. And I'm just uh it's frustrating to think that that that's not being considered at least for for uh you know, maybe I get that you've considered it for six months. Well, it's been five months, but um I don't know. It's just it's frustrating to lose this license. I know, and I and and these are unprecedented times for everybody. So there's so in the back of my mind is there are all these other restaurants that we don't want more doors to close. We don't want anybody to find themselves in that position. So if this license is going to help as it was designed to do, that was the whole design of it was to make these licenses more. I mean, you understand that make the licenses more available so that businesses can improve. Um, I wanna get it back out there specifically because of these unprecedented times that we're in. You know, and I think the conversation might be different if we weren't sitting here, you know, in the middle of COVID and with all of the struggles that you've just described, but we are. So it's, it's a little, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a preserver for preserver vest for somebody else who's really sinking right now. And I believe that there's, you know, that, that potential is there for other businesses to end up closing. I, I I have nothing else to say. I don't, yeah, I don't either. No, I'm but sorry. I, I understand that, uh, you know, I understand everything you're you're saying and I, I thank you for uh, having us here. Um, of course, I appreciate I, you I'm coming. I'm also somewhat frustrated, but I do understand. I get it. Yep, I understand. And I, I totally get that. Um, and I respect that. And I, I appreciate that you came and talked to us about it. And All right, can I just throw in one last thing? And that is there are numerous other liquor licenses not even being used in this town. And I wish the board could do something about those licenses because we are in a position to be able to purchase a license, which if they would release them, but they're being held by someone who is not using them and continues to get away with it. And I understand that. And I, I'm very, very glad you brought that up. So it's not a matter of, it is now a matter of public record and, um, while those other licenses aren't on the agenda, they are in discussion. So that's, I assure you of that. Thank you. Yes. We understand the position you're in, so we hold no animosity. We understand the situation. Likewise. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I know. I get it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I wish we had lots of licenses, Annie, to have available. I know. Yes, can we get control over that? If we could have control over that, that would be lovely. I know. There, there is a lot of frustration around these issues and these yeah. closures and these difficult times. All right, um, so we're gonna move on to new business, which thank you to um, Chris and Pete for alluding to the um, unused licenses in town. When can we get this on the agenda? Um, a month will be in two days. Okay. So um, I don't know. 
maybe okay. December, maybe December, maybe I'll have to talk to attorney Seawald about it. Okay. That would be great as soon as as soon as we're able to um, to get that on the agenda for discussion would be great. Yep, I agree. And um, are there any other updates for anything like the American Legion project on Riverside? Um, they are still waiting on the closing. It got pushed back. Um, he doesn't know why. He's, he knows it's going to go through, but um, it's just a matter of when. Um, they are going to, they do plan on renewing the license and making payment for this year and the previous two. Okay. And um, so now just with those unused lic licenses on my brain, the only ones that we have are the ones for Eric's establishments, right? For the... Um, and the Ellery. Um, although Smith College wants to take it over, but they've had trouble getting um, DUA certificates from the sellers. Um, mm -hmm. and they can't transfer the license without those. Um, but I actually talked to their attorney today and he, the attorney for the seller, and he is going to work with them to try and get these certificates and renew the license to keep it in circulation. Um, mm -hmm. And then, so once they have those certificates, they will, um, they'll be able to transfer it to Smith. Okay. And has the Ellery been open? Are they still open? Yes, they're open. And what's the turnaround time, Annie? When do you expect those documents? Any idea? Uh, I Well, the renewal needs to happen in the month of November. I, yep. I mean, once they request the certificates from the state, it doesn't take more than, I think, like a week or two. Um, and I know that Smith is, wants the license and is ready to go. Um, and all their attorneys have been engaged to make the transfer happen. It's just a matter of getting those two documents. So I would, I would guess very soon after they can get the seller to get the certificates. Because I, I don't think it's a matter of being out of compliance. I think it's just a matter of like getting in contact with somebody from um, the old ownership. Um, you know what I wish I thought to mention to the Martins and maybe Annie when they bring the license you could mention it to them, but there is the cordial license. Right, right, yeah. You could also get. Yep, I will certainly say that. Yeah, yeah. and I, I mean, I know Dirty Truth has built a really interesting, fun, cordial cocktail menu using that license and they're in compliance, <laughs> unlike some other people. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And I think, and the only other, actually the only other one is Wine Witch. Um, they plan to renew the license um, because it makes the space more attractable to lease. Um, but they don't own that space. No, but they, they're trying to, I guess they're trying to sell oh. the- Oh, they, yeah, the business is for sale. Yeah. Okay, um, and they've just got a the wine. That's beer. Just beer and wine, right? So, and had that transitioned to um, year round already? Had they done that, or is it still seasonal? Yes, because he, uh, he took that over from Belly and of the Beast, so yeah. it's, it's been right. a transferred license. It wasn't a new. And right. Started. Okay. All right. Yep. But okay. Other than that. So wine which can retain that asset because that license isn't obtained as a special under the 2016 special conditions. Right, it's not a special yes. act license. So the ABCC yeah. allows, it's really at the local authority's discretion, but about six or so months of non-use in, in order to either sell it or lose it. Not sell it, but transfer it because mm -hmm. it doesn't. The beer and wine licenses don't have that. They don't have really a, a significant value to them. Okay. Does anybody else have new business they'd like to bring up? Yeah, I wanted to bring up 
because uh, the Bombix thing has been churning in my brain for a month. Yeah. Um, and I, I mentioned it during the last meeting, but I want to bring it up again, um, that it just seems not right, honestly, that we are in charge of entertainment for that venue and making decisions about entertainment. To me, I mean, just because they're now serving little food, that's my understanding is like, they need a common fixture license. And suddenly we are making decisions about what is a concert venue. I mean, it seems akin to us making decisions about what they're gonna play at the Calvin and how many shows they're gonna have or at the Academy of Music. I mean, it's this goes, in my opinion, way beyond the scope of what the License Commission is supposed to do. I mean, what we do, it makes sense that it's like there's a concert venue and we're telling them that they can serve beer and wine, not, oh, they're serving beer and wine and some food. So we're telling them what shows they can put on when and where. Um, and, and I am very concerned, you know, about what's going to happen. You know, I'm now in retrospect wishing maybe I had said, yeah, we, they can't have so many outdoor concerts. But I think I was mostly focusing on, honestly, like, yes. why why are we in charge of making these decisions yeah. like this? And, and I don't know who, like, if it, like, previously, is it a mayor's office thing? I mean, as when they were just a concert venue and we weren't in charge of them, Who's who's making those sorts? Is it a mayor's office decision? Well, if they didn't have, they didn't have a con, they didn't need a common fixtures license because they didn't have food. So then they get a mayoral entertainment license. Okay. So, so that it was on the mayor's desk until the common fix license, and then it came to us. But the tricky thing with, um, which again is you know a bigger reason why you're asking why us, but they rezoned that location. So it's became office industrial, mm -hmm. which should allow by right some more uses, um, sort of complicated the matter. Yeah. But I know, I mean, is there historically, is there anything, any kind of entertainment like, I mean, the entertainment licenses previous to the pandemic was Right. They want to play a little music, you know, in in their restaurant or you know in their their bar, and the, it, it honestly feels like sort of like a little side job that we had um, to approve those things. And and now I don't know. It just the, the central focus of that location is not a restaurant or a bar. It is a concert venue. And now suddenly it is falling onto the license commission to make decisions about a concert venue about the concerts. I mean, Helen, totally agree. we licensed the, the license commission licensed the Pines Theater. And I mean, that's a, you could say that's a concert venue. Do you, in what? We licensed the. The Pines Theater has an entertainment license. But they don't come every year for it. I've never seen them. They've already, because they've already gotten it. They, they, it's just an annual renewal. Um, I wasn't even aware of that. So that, I mean, they started, I guess, before my time. And that's because they serve beer and wine and then we're- That's because they they serve beer and wine. And so part of the entertainment license says they can have however many outdoor concerts. Uh, I honestly don't, I don't know the specifics of their, their individual license, but yeah, I mean, it's state law that the, this license, that the license commission issues yeah. entertainment licenses right this just feels i don't this know this isn't something that like the city was like oh throw this to the, the license commission or handle it like this is state law and and what do we need because i think we need things to be able to better make these decisions and feel better about them but i don't know what those things are that we need yeah and it's and you're you're right before before COVID, no one was really doing any outdoor entertainment, but the only one I can think of is the Pines Theater. Which I didn't and, even realize that was under our purview. Oh um, yeah, and uh, the other one is Mineral Hills Winery. They have an entertainment license for outside. Um, I don't know, I, I off the top of my head, I can't think of another one, but I guess maybe, because they were they were they got their licenses years ago like even before like i'm sure the pines even had it before i was even born like it's just <laughs> like every every year they just get renewed yeah. so you wouldn't you're right you wouldn't necessarily know which establishments have an entertainment license or don't yeah yeah it's just regardless of how bombix is zoned today i mean it's still in a neighborhood yeah. you know and i walk by and and I think, gosh, uh, if they're having hundreds of people outside 
and and they're pulling in significant names. I mean, so these would be big shows. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I feel an extra sense of responsibility because it's a neighborhood, regardless of the zoning. It's still, you know, yeah. there's a lot of houses. Uh, well, it's it, not quite the same at the Pines Theater. Um, this one just feels different, you know. And then, of course, the neighbors have spoken to us too, you know. So it's and they were so gracious and so wanting this to work for Bombix and but I, I think also feeling really unsupported as taxpayers because they're not really getting you know the city changed the zoning but they're yeah which yeah it's just it's not a great situation and I don't know I'm I'm concerned about it I'm not looking forward to it because it is going to come before us again I'm 100% sure and um and that's why I really wanted to make the point at our meeting with them was for practical purposes, you're going to book out all of these shows and yeah. then there's going to be a ton of complaints and you're going to come back and we're going to have to walk this back. And then you're left financially responsible for any contracts you've signed. So it's a draft. I recall we, we, in the end, we're not sort of proactively saying that we're inserting ourselves and we sort of left it up to them. They said, we're going to do these sound tests and we're going to do the check. Yeah. 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 Well, and the fact is if they, you know, if, so let's say a neighbor insists on having a um, decibel counter at the property line, they're not going to be able to come in below what's allowable in the city. And I think it's one decibel, right? Annie, for regardless of the zoning. Isn't it just like one? Oh yeah, one ordinance. ordinance. Oh yeah, I think so. yeah. yeah for zoning, yeah. yeah. So what is that? Where does that leave them? It's just like it's just not a great. It's not a great setup. Right, and I know that the uh, you know the neighbors have expressed that they hate being in that position where they have yes. You know, they're trying to work with them, but yeah, feel very uncomfortable that it's up to them to complain to have anything happen. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I would, this is like, I would love to know what we don't know, like what could be helpful to us to make these decisions and make this less awful because it does. I mean, I have, you know, during some of our more difficult meetings in the last couple of years, all of our difficult meetings, the last couple of years have been around entertainment licenses and disturbing neighbors. And I don't want to, you know, we don't have any basis. We don't have any like parameters that aren't completely arbitrary. So that, that no, is just one second, because I want I just want to say something to that. But Mo McGinnis is in the waiting room. I, I mean, who is, who is that? I feel like I mean we're beyond the we don't. I know, but do I? Know. I mean, do I have to? Because I don't know. No. No. No, I mean, if yeah. if she, if she I wants, mean, she, can, she can. I think I have to let her in. Yeah, but we're not on that agenda item, so she can't speak to it. No, I mean, I'm about to adjourn the meeting. Which agenda item is that? I'm just she's sure. the um, item number ten, the license. Oh. Okay, but so I do. I whatever I can give you for the entertainment. Like, just tell me what you need because I I know it's frustrating and stressful and I want to help you make these decisions so yeah well if it's anything you think of or that would yeah. be helpful for you like I will do it that would be great and I don't know maybe I'll do a little bit of research like we did the last time mm -hmm. <laughs> we Helen and uh, Jennifer Helen and I did this like sideline of research into what other community how other communities were handling the entertainment licenses and complaints and things like that and it was a little bit of a rabbit hole because none of it proved to actually be very helpful. Yeah. Um, or maybe it did. We didn't do some things, I guess, based on what we learned, but. Um, helpful. And they said, yeah, we went through this and that and the other thing, and then it didn't help in the end, you know? <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. They're like, oh, well, we don't need to bother going. Yeah. There is no easy button on these. That's for sure. You no, know. there isn't. No. But yeah, Annie, thank you. So if, if, if uh, yeah, if I think of anything that would be helpful. I mean, maybe just like uh, having a better understanding also of collaborating with other city entities um, around the noise complaint piece, like 
So let's say the neighbors start complaining about the noise. You know, there's always, I'm still not clear who, who can order a decibel count. We don't have the authority over the building department to go do that. No, if, if it's during the evening, people need to call PD. Yep. Yeah. Um, they don't want to do, it's just awful. Right. Yeah. What? I mean, and that's the tricky thing is because I know these neighbors have sort of expressed they don't want to have to to do that. And it seems like there's no other recourse. I mean, I don't aside from I don't know if writing a in this is still complaining, writing a letter to the license commission that's signed by many people saying, you know, as opposed to calling out the police. Yeah. So so I mean, so calling the police if it's late night, they can't sleep, they want the music turned down, like that's their recourse. If they don't want to do that, then then that's their choice. Yeah. But up, then they can, anybody can send a, uh, a, a message to the license commission and then the license commission would be the one to order the, the decibel count. But like citizens can't just be calling the building department saying I want a, a, a decibel right. count. Yeah. yeah, come now, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, right. Well, I know there's gonna be ongoing discussions with the neighbors and and mm -hmm. bombics and by some miracle maybe something will be worked out we'll see <laughs> that would be great yeah. um any other new business from anybody no nope. i have nothing just license renewals or just went out yesterday monday um <laughs> the worst time of year <sighs> um yeah i guess that's it, nothing really else. Oh, I guess I should ask quickly, oh, this hopefully doesn't put us down a rabbit hole, but with TELUS and the satellite bar, speaking of noise complaints, I mean, it's sort of, there's nothing at this point that we are um, not to do, right? No, they're aware, uh, uh, Natasha, do you wanna? Sure, they're, um, they're aware of the, of the complainant and um, have work, are working on it. You know, they, they, I think they feel a little targeted. Mm -hmm. um, it's one person who's complained by, I think it was five times in four weeks. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. And every, every time the police go, not every time, but most of the time the police go and they, they say like the sound is not unreasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, hopefully that works itself out too. I think I I think it will. I have a um I'm super impressed with the owners there. They're just really eager to to do this right, be a good neighbor, provide a great place for people. Katie to said the same thing about them tonight, right? She referenced that that's why she's working with them at Cedar Chest. Yes, because okay. she was impressed with their leadership yeah. and their concern. Yeah. Yeah, they're being I have found them to be super respectful of all of it and yeah yeah amanda's been fantastic to, to work with yep yep great that's good yeah that counts mm -hmm. it does all right shall we shall we finish this let's, let's finish this all right let's finish this i'll make a motion to adjourn okay <laughs>